All right, we're on 7.1, <clears throat> day two, page two. We are talking the ambiguous case here. All right, now this, again, stop the video as much as possible. <clears throat> um, I wanna explain a few things. There's a relationship that we're gonna be dealing with between the law of sine and the law of cosine. Now, you don't really have to write this down, but in the, the um, law of sine, um, it's basically gonna be used when you have angle side angle, okay, essentially, okay? <clears throat> You'll also use it when you have side side angle. In other words, the angle is not in between the two sides. I wrote ASS here, but it might be better explained SSA to avoid bad words. <clears throat> so um, the SSA situation is a case where you might have no solution, one solution, or two solutions. Just because the um, there's a hinge in there that you don't know what the angle is, it makes a difference. And we're going to explain that. Okay, the law of the law of cosines is essentially used for side angle side or side 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 okay that's a law of cosines so <clears throat> you have to kind of understand that when you're given three of the six parts of a triangle which law to use in the previous video we talked about this part the unambiguous case and now we're talking about the um law of the, the ambiguous case which is um this one right here the ssa one okay so um, and then the law of cosines, that comes in section 7.2. That's coming next. And that is, um, there's a lot more math involved, a lot more calculations involved. It's a little more, a little more complex. All right, and they're related because <clears throat> when you use the law of cosines, you generally speaking only do it to find one additional piece of the triangle. Then you go back to the law of sines. So, all right, anyhow, let's get started, all right? So, when you have SSA, side, side angle, in other words, the angle is not in the middle of the two sides, okay? Then it's possible you have <clears throat> one solution, two solutions, or no solution. Now, I broke this down into obtuse and acute. Remember, obtuse is bigger than 90. If you have an angle bigger than 90, the given one is bigger than 90, then you're either gonna have no solution or one solution. I have some notation here, so you're gonna wanna write this down with my example, potentially. <clears throat> All right, so let's say you have an obtuse angle, and we'll call it angle B, and you're given a side that is 10, okay? And then you're given the other side, okay? The other side, but the other side is not uh, bracketing the angle. So we have SSA. Let's say you're given it's like six, something like that, okay? Something like six. Now, again, I have side, side, angle. The angle is not in between the two sides. So I don't know what this angle is. It's kind of on a hinge there, okay? And that becomes the hinge theory stuff that we're going to be talking about. Well, my notation here is S same, meaning I have... I have side that is six, and let's say six is side B, and this is also B. So the side that is the same notation as the angle, this is B. If it is less than or equal to the given side or the other side, then you're gonna have no solution, okay? Now there's other ways to pick that up mathematically. Because if you recall, sine is a number between negative one and one. And if you have an answer to an angle that is outside of that, you have no solution. So there's multiple ways to pick up the fact that you have no solution. It's not just one way to pick it up. And I'm going to try to go slow enough so that you see all of that. It's pretty cool. All right. Now, visually, let's check this out. This is side B. And side B was six. Just looking at this, if you were to swing this, this side around, it'll never reach because the side that is, uh, the other side that is given is 10, it's too big. 
you can just tell visually it's not going to work. Okay, so that's the no solution one. Now, <clears throat> let's go um, to the one solution one. Okay, the one solution one would be all right. We got angle B and it's obtuse. Okay, and then we're given it's we're given the other side is ten, so that's other ten. Then we're saying the same the uh, side B, in other words, the same as the angle letter. Let's say that's fifteen. Well, because that's bigger, you can just visually see eventually it's going to hit, and you're going to have one solution. Okay. Now again, there's other ways to do that, and I'm going to be doing both ways but I'm just giving you this kind of general look at this to really help you, okay? This can be complex, hence this video has been made. All right, now, let's say you have, you are given an acute, what you think you're given an angle that's acute, okay? You might have an obtuse triangle, but you're given an acute angle to begin with. All right, now, um, this is where we can, if you want to go this route, you can. I do it sometimes a different way, but you can start thinking about the triangle and its height. And this is going to be cool. I'm going to explain the hinge theory to you. Okay. So let's go after this. So let's say you have a situation where um, you are given that, let's say you're given that, that side is 10. Okay. So in this example, um, I'll just keep using my number. We've got angle B here. doesn't matter what it is, but it's acute this time. Let's say this is 10. And then you're given another side. Let's say that side is 6 right here, okay? Let's say that side is 6, okay? What you can do is you can calculate the theoretical height of this triangle. Or the, not theoretical, the actual height of the triangle. By simply going, um, the let's see here, the sine of B equals the 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 opposite, whatever that angle is, whatever that side is, the the side they give you over ten. Okay. Now I'm going to draw this height with decimals, or with dashes, I should say, decimals, dashes. I'm going to put this right here. Okay, now if the other side that they give you right here is less than the height, you're going to have no solution because it's not going to reach. Okay, does that make sense to you? Now, if that other side is the same as the height, the exact same, you're going to have one solution because notice it's going to hit there. Now, if that other side, let me erase this real quick here, all right? Hit the eraser. If that other side, if that other side is greater than the height, you're going to have two solutions. This is the hinge theory. Check it out. Let's say it's longer. So it'll hit twice. If you think about it, it'll hit here. And then if you swing this thing through, it'll hit here too. So notice you'll have two different tr possible triangles. One is acute and one is obtuse, okay? Now, I'm going to demonstrate all this. So sometimes explaining it in theory can be difficult to follow, but I'll be demonstrating all this, but at least you're going to have this uh, written out for you. So I think it'll make a lot more sense when we start doing it. Okay, let's give this a shot, all right? So I'll, the answers are going to be down below so you can see them while I work through them, okay? So I'm working on number four. 4A right now. All right. Okay, so I'm going to draw this. All right. So I'm just going to start with this. I'm going to draw what I think is about 98 degrees. Okay, so that's, nine, that's A and that's 98 degrees. Okay. And then I'm going to write this as 8.5. And notice side A is 6.2. And I tried to draw it to scale. I tried to. It just doesn't look like it's going to reach. So I know from up above when I have an obtuse triangle and the other side that is given is smaller, 6.2 is less than 8.5, okay? So I know that I'm going to have no solution. But let me show you 
another way of doing this, okay? So what we're going to do is a law of signs. We're going to go, let's just say you weren't paying attention. You're working real quick. The sign of 98 degrees, okay, over 6.2 should equal the sign of B over 8.5. Now, if you calculate that through, which we're going to do, I'm going to break out the calculator here, okay? So with the calculator, and you can see the work on there, I'm going to go the sine of 98 degrees, okay, times 8.5. And then I'm going to divide that by 6.2, okay? Now, notice that the sine of B, so the sine of B is supposed to equal 1.36. The sine cannot be bigger than 1. So right there, I should say, oh, I got no solution. That's a great way to catch that. But let's say you don't catch it. Let's say you don't. So then you go back and, okay, I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to go uh, second sine of the answer, second answer. Okay, so I'm going to take the sine of that. And the calculator will tell you invalid domain. What's that? Well, what that's saying is the sine can't be bigger than one. That's another way to catch the fact that we have no solution. Okay, so there are so many ways to do this. Um, to catch the fact that you have no that you that you have no solution it's really cool so one way would be the fact that i warned you that if that other side is less than 8.5 there then you're going to have it's not going to reach you can tell my drawing the second way is to realize oh the sign of angle b is outside the domain of study there's a lot of ways to do that okay but there you go all right now question b now Okay, we're going to do question B. You can see the answers down there. I'll probably round them a little bit, but I like to have the answers sitting there. It makes it a little bit easier to, to go through. So, all right. Once again, we, got, we have an obtuse triangle. This is like 113 degrees. Okay. All right. And then um, side 6.2 is here. And then side C is 8.5. Now, notice on this, notice that 8.5 is bigger than 6.2. So it's going to be fine. It's going to make it. Okay, you're going to have, you're going to have something there. All right, so I'm going to go after this angle right here first, okay? So that's going to be pretty simple. I know I'm going to have, I know I'm going to have one solution. And a obtuse triangle right away has one solution, if, you, if it's obtuse right away. You don't have to worry about the two solution one, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's check it out. So I'm going to go the, um, basically I'm going to go 8.5 over the sine of 113 degrees, and that's going to equal um, 6.2 over the um, sine of angle B. And we know the answer is around 42 degrees. Let's go to the calculator and let's get this, okay? So you guys can have this totally dialed in. I won't do the calculator the whole time, but I'll do it for a while. Okay, uh, clear that. So I'm gonna go, you can see it right above that. So I'm gonna go the sine of 113, close the parentheses, times 6.2. And I'm going to go divided by 8.5. Awesome. All right. Now, the sine is within the domain, 0.67. So I need to do the inverse of that. So second sine, the inverse of the answer, second answer. That way I can get the whole thing in there. And it's about 42 degrees. Okay. Cool. So I have a 42-degree angle to work with. Okay, let me go back to the drawing here. So this thing is around, whoops, 
Um, this thing is 42 degrees right there. Okay. So um, then you can figure out the other angle by 180 minus, and that comes out around 24 degrees. Okay. And then to get the last side right here, this particular side, which is uh, side A, you're going to have to do the law of sines one more time, which I won't do here. Okay. I think you can figure that last part out. Okay. Which you did on the previous lesson. So it's pretty easy. Okay. Now let's go to C. Okay. Let's do C. And you can see C does end up being a no solution problem. You already can see the answer, but let's let's check let's check out what's going on here. Okay, so we've got A is 68 degrees. Let me draw this out here. Um, A is, and I like to draw try to draw a scale. That looks like about 68 degrees. A is 68 degrees, and I'll label it. Okay. And then um, B is 9.1. I'm going to put 9.1 here. We got, okay, B there. And then you've got side A. And side A, I'll put it in dots there, is 7.8. All right. You probably realize that may not make it. That, that's, that swing, if you swing that thing, it's not ever going to hit it. So, but if, but if you have doubt, you can go ahead and carry it all through by going, okay, I'm going to go the sine of 68 degrees. And again, I got SSA here. Side, side, I got side, side, angle. Okay, the sine of 68 over 7.8 equals, um, let's see, the, equals the sine of B over 9.1. I'm just going to do the law of sines. Let's say I don't want to mess with the height thing that we talked about. I'm not going to play with that. I'm just not going to mess with it, okay, that I talked about earlier, okay? So let's just go ahead and multiply that through. Let's just do the math and see what happens, okay? We should be playing with the height here, but let's try. So I'm going to go the sine of 68, and I'm going to multiply it by 9.1, okay? And then I'm gonna divide it by 7.8. Aha, look, the sine is over one. That's outside the domain of study. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get an answer, okay? So for most kids, I recommend just doing the calculations and seeing if the sign is outside the domain of study, negative one to one, then you don't have a solution. Now, if you wanted to do it off the way that I was showing you in the directions, that's fine too. Let's check that out. Let's get the height of this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna change colors and let's get the height of this guy. What The height of this particular triangle. Draw it again here. All right, the height of this thing. All right, now you could get the height by this will be the hypotenuse. So we're gonna go the sine of 68 degrees equals the height over 9.1. All right, no problem, okay? So I'm gonna to go to my calculator, clear this, and I'm gonna go the sine of 68 times 9.1. Ah, 8.4. So the minimum that this side needs to be to actually reach the other side is 8.4. 7.8 is simply not big enough. That that angle, that side, excuse me, is not big enough. If you swing it over, it'll never hit the other side. So you have no solution. That's the, that's the other way of doing it. There's a couple of ways to do it, okay? All right, so that's A, B, and C. So we're doing good so far. And if you're struggling, we got six more to go here. So it'll 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 uh, it will get better, all right. And you can always access me in class. Okay. So for D, let's check out D. Okay. Okay. So for D, you can see that we got one answer here. We we actually have a night. We have a right triangle on this one. So let's let's talk about the couple of ways this would play out. All right. So let's get a drawing of this thing. All right. 
we we have a we have a side here that I don't know how how long it is, and we got angle B, and I'm going to try to draw this realistically, 37 degrees, a little less than a 45. Okay, and this is 10.8. Now side B is 6.5. I don't know if it's going to reach or not that other side. So again, what you have that's given, and I will help you with that. I'm going to highlight the given parts with in purple. You're given a side, a side, and an angle, SSA. That's what you're given. And we know that with an acute triangle like this, it's you have an acute angle. It may not be an acute triangle, but you have an acute angle given. You might have... Zero solutions, one solution, or two solutions. I'm just going to do a quick check of the theoretical height of this triangle, okay? So that would be making 10.8 the hypotenuse. So the sine of 37 degrees equals the height over 10.8. And I'm just going to see what that looks like in relation to 6.5. That's all I'm going to check, okay? So let's check it out. So I'm going to go the sine of 37 degrees times 10.8. Wow, it's 6.5. Now, I know it's rounded, but it's 6.5. I was trying to get it the same. All right, so 6.5. All right, so cool. So I already know kind of what the deal is on this, okay? I know that I have a 90-degree angle right here at the bottom there. I can see it. Okay, so this was 90. So that's where I got that 90 degree angle. So what I think I have here is that's 90, that's 37, that's 10.8, that's 6.5. And then just using the 180 rule and the Pythagorean theorem, I can solve the rest of it. I will let you do that. I'm not going to be here and solve all of that. Now let's attack this a different way. Let's say you don't like monkeying with the height. Let's just try this, okay? And this will be cool. I'm going to redraw this, okay? So you're coming to this problem fresh. You're going to draw it out. I'm giving an acute angle. I'm going to try to draw it realistic. 37 degrees. And, and then we've got 10.8 uh, here. And then we've got 6.5 is here. Okay. And I'm just going to start the process of trying to do this problem. So I'm going to do my law of sines. The sine of 37 degrees, okay, divided by 6.5 should equal the sine of A over 10.8. Okay. Now, by the way, this is A right here. Okay. And uh, this is B, okay? And this is little a and little b, okay? So take that all in. Now, I'm going to go to my calculator. And I'm going to run this through, okay? So let's go to the calculator and let's run this. <clears throat> so we got the sine of 37, okay? Times 10.8, okay? divided by, let's see here, oops, hit the wrong button there, okay, um, divided by, uh, 6.5, is that right? Yeah, divided by 6.5, wow, lost my, lost my mind there. All right, now, that is supposed to be the sign of one, I'm trying to make that one, okay? I don't always make it perfect, but so what's the sine at one? It's 90 degrees, okay? So the sine at this, so we, we know that A is 90, okay? So if A is 90, we have a right triangle, okay? So that's the other way of checking that, okay? That's kind of cool. And then you can solve the rest of it yourself, which takes additional law of signs, but I don't want to convolute the subject here. But you've learned that in the previous day, which is why we did that. Okay, next. We're going to do um, 
E. And E is going to be our first one where we get two different answers. Okay. So this is going to be pretty cool. And this takes, this takes quite a bit of work. So let me circle this so you know which problem I'm on. Okay, here's E right here, okay? And I'm probably not gonna do the calculator part because you'll, you'll be able to handle that. All right, so let's draw this thing out, okay? So we got A is 71 degrees. I'm gonna try to make that pretty good, 71 degrees, okay? And then they tell us that C is 12.6. And I do not know what this other side is. And then we, they tell me that A is 12.3, okay? So we got some, some side A is 12.3. All right, so what we got, and again, I'm gonna highlight this for you. We got SSA, right? We got side, and this is an angle A. We got side, that's A, side, that's B, angle. We got side, side, angle. So we might, and we have an acute angle given. So we could have one answer, two answers, or three answers. Now, I went ahead and calculated the height, and we've done that a bunch of times, and that would be done by simply going the sine of 71 degrees equals H over 12.6. Okay, I calculated the height. I'm not going to go back through that a bunch of times. Now, now that I got that calculated, I realized that this other side that's this uh, side that we have here, 12.3, is bigger than 11.9. It's bigger. It's not the same. It's bigger. If it was smaller than the height, no solution. If it's the same as the height, I have one solution. If it's bigger than the height, I got two solutions. Now, this is what's going on. We don't know how long this thing is, but think of this as a hinge right here. This is the hinge right here, okay? And this, this side of 12.3 will hit it twice as it swings through. So you're going to have one triangle looking on this that's obtuse, and one trial, a triangle like this that's acute. Okay, so you have two different solutions. This is going to be cool, so check it out. That's all the run-up to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do our law of sines. And we know what it is. The sine of 71 degrees over 12.3 is going to equal sine of C over 12.6. And again, I'm not going to... I'm not going to run through all of the calculations on the calculator, but what you're going to get when you do that, you're going to get about 70, 76 degrees, let's say on the first one. So C is going to be 76 degrees. What I tell people to do, and this is really cool, okay, is it's an easier way to do this. You know there's two answers to this. C could be 76 or it could be 180 minus 76 because we know that the sine is the same number in two different quadrants. It could be about 104. So here's your two triangles, 76 and 104. Okay. So what you do then is you ask yourself, is there enough room in this triangle with the other given angle to have two different triangles? So let me change colors and we'll do this, all right? So the first one, 76. 76 and 71, okay, give, is less than 180, okay? And that gives you enough room to have another try, to have another angle. And that would be this one, the 33 degree one, okay? And then 104 over here, 104 plus 71. Yeah, that gives you enough room barely to have another triangle. Okay, four point or basically five degrees. So that's what you do. And then you got to calculate all of it for two different triangles. So let me draw those triangles real quick. I'm going to do some erasing here and let me draw it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do some erasing. Eraser. Okay, let me erase all of this. 
And you can kind of see it laid out there for you. Okay. So one triangle, possible triangle, is going to look like this. Okay. It's going to be like this, right? This is going to be, this is 71. <clears throat> um, this is 104 degrees. This is 12.6. Okay. And then you got to calculate the rest. The other triangle is the acute one. Okay. Now it's going to be 71 here. And that's going to be, um, let's see here, 75 here. Okay, and that's still that's still 12.6 and 12.3, and you've got to calculate the rest. So visually, let's do this one more time. What's going on here is this side hit this thing twice. You see that? And that formed the other triangle. This one, same side, kind of 12.3 hits it twice if it swings through. And that's what's going on. Pretty cool. It's a very, very cool problem. A lot of calculations. You got to take your time on this. It definitely takes time, okay? Okay, for 4F, 4F, again, you can see that the issue here, you're going to have a no solution. Let's do this a couple different ways. This is going to be great. Okay, so let's draw this out. We have an acute angle given. And if I remember correctly, in the acute angle, okay, let's draw this out. We got, an, we got the acute, if I remember right, with the acute angle, we, it'd be great to calculate the height first. You don't have to, but you definitely could. Okay, so we got um, 8.7 here. And then this is 6.6 .6 right here. This looks a little short, like it's not going to reach, just if I draw it accurately. So let me do a quick check of the height of this thing, okay? So I'll do a quick check of the height. What would be the height of this guy? All right. So the height would be simply the um, sine of 53 degrees equals the height, that blue line, over 8.7. That comes out almost 7, 6.9. 6.6 is simply too short. It's not going to make it, okay? Now, if you didn't know that and you went ahead and did it another way, that's fine. You can actually do that. It's no big deal. You could go, all right, I'm just going to do this a different way. I'm going to go the sine of 53 degrees over 6.6 .6 equals the um, uh, sine of C over 8.7. Okay, let's just do it this way. And I'm going for this angle right here, right here that I've, the blue one right there. Okay, let's just check it out. So let me go to the calculator on this. All right, here we go. I'm going to go the sine of 53 times 8.7. I'm going to divide it by... 6.6 .6. and oh it comes out a number over one and there's no angle that has a sign over one so it's no solution that'd be the other way you could just stumble on it a lot of kids like to do that instead of calculating the height but you can using the directions above okay for g <clears throat> Um, this is what we got so far. So on 4G, let me lower this just a little bit. All right. So we have um, we have a given an acute angle. Okay. So we've gone through this before. So and then you can see the answers down below, which is kind of nice to see ahead of time. Okay. Now 4G, I'll circle that. Right, we've got a 48 degree angle. I'm right, trying to do that to scale pretty close. And um, we're, I'm going to put B at 10.9 right here. All right. So I do not know what this one is. 
And then C is 8.1, all right? And I'm not sure if 8.1 will hit, if it'll be short, if it'll be, I'm, gonna, I, I'm really not clear by the drawing if I'm gonna have zero answers, one answer or two answers. So one way to handle this is just to go the sine of 48 degrees and check what the mythical height would be, or not the mythical, what is the actual height of the triangle? is h over um over 10.9 okay all right so if you do that okay h will come out 8.1 it will so it's the actual it is the actual c so this thing is actually a right angle okay now if you chose so we have one answer so now that we got three things, you can solve the rest very easily. I mean, like I said, once you get this, if that's 48 degrees, and this is obviously 42 degrees, and then you can use the Pythagorean theorem to get this particular angle right here, side right there. You can also use the law of sines as well. Now, the other way to do that, if you don't want, if you don't like that height check for the acute given angle. The other way to do that, and I've showed you this before, is I'm just going to go ahead and do the law of sines and just see what happens. So that would be the sine of 48 degrees over 8.1 equals the sine of B over 10.9. And you're going to find out that, this, that B is 90 degrees, okay? Now, even if you, at this point, don't realize you have the height, even if you don't realize that, when you go to see if, if there's a second angle, 180 minus 90 is 90 anyways. So it's like repetitive. So there are so many ways to figure out that this happens to be a right triangle and there's only one solution. There's so many ways to check that. I basically give you three, okay? So that's G. Let's go to H, okay? Come on now. So H, um, you can see we're going to have two answers a piece on. We're going to have two answers on this. We can see what's coming. All right. So let me just draw this out, okay? So um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to draw it to scale. I'm doing H. So 62 degrees. That looks that looks pretty good. 62 degrees, okay? And then I'm told this is 7.5. Okay, and this is C, and this is B, okay? So I do not know what A is over here. I don't know. And so, but I know that C, the um, <clears throat> side C is 6.9. Now, I don't know if that 6.9 is going to come in here, if it's going to come in here or both. What's going to happen? I don't know. So let me just start, okay, to do this. I'll do my height check. Again, some of you may not like this, and you don't necessarily have to do this step, but it's kind of cool. So I'm just going to do the sine of 62 degrees equals the height over 7.5. And if you do that, you're going to get about 6.6. .6. Now, C is 6.9. It's bigger than that. So I know that I have two different answers. So let me write this out. Let me change color. That 6.9 is going to hit here. And if that it's like a hinge. Remember, this is a hinge. It's also going to hit it somewhere in here, too. So it's going to swing and it hits twice. Okay? It doesn't fit nice and neat and perfectly square like a 90. It hits it twice. So now I have to do basically two different equations, okay? So let me erase a couple of things here so we can get started. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do now is the law of sines. And this may be the place you started. Maybe you didn't do the height check. You don't necessarily have to. You're going to start with the sine of 62 degrees over 6.9, right? This is the law of sines. We've learned it a million times. B equals the sine of B over 7.5. And if you solve that, B comes out about 
about 74 degrees, about. Well, we realized that because we, there's another angle in quadrant two that would also have the same sign as 74 degrees. And that's 180 minus 74. And, and that <clears throat> obviously comes out to about 106. So we got two different triangles going, okay? And you can see the answers here. So um, one of the triangles is here. That's the obtuse one. And then the other one here is the regular one. I'm going to redraw those. So make sure you write this part down. And I'm going to redraw both of those so you see them, okay? Let me erase part of this. So hopefully you got that dialed in after you pause the video, okay? And then you'll be, you'll be, I'm not going to go through all the calculations because that's done in other videos. You have to be able to do some of that on your own. But let's draw them both, okay? So here's one of them. Here's one of the possibilities. That's 62 degrees. That is 7.5, okay? And then you got this 104, 106 degree angle right here, okay? Get that to match up somewhere over there, okay? That's one of them, okay? And we figured out that that is 106 about, I have the exact answer. I would round if I was you. And then A is around 12 degrees. And then you know that this is 6.9. And all you have to do is solve for that one using the law of sines. The other one is an acute triangle, okay? I think it's also scalene, it's all different. So this is 62 degrees. This ends up being around 74 degrees, okay? And then, and then um, this ends up being around, I think 44 degrees to round it out, okay? And this is 7.5, 6.9, and you have to solve for this side right here, okay? Which ends up being this right here, okay? And as you can see, this side A goes to this one, really small. Pretty cool. Okay, so again, pause the video there if you need to, to check all that out. And then we're on to the last one. This is a very, very long lesson. Very cool though, okay? So let's do a great job on 4i before you leave the video, okay? Let me clear this. Now 4i, okay? 4i, I'm gonna circle this, what we're doing here. Okay, I'm going to try to do a good drawing over here, okay? And I'm going to start to the left again. All right, so this is, um, this is 46 degrees. Okay, it goes something like that. This is 10.1 on my drawing, okay? And then I got this side of 8.6, which I've underlined. And I don't, I'm going to do a dotted line. It might hit here. It might hit here, it might hit as the height. I don't really know, but I know it's 8.6. So again, I'm thinking, do I have zero answers? Do I have two answers or do I have one answer? Okay, all right. So I'm gonna do the height check. You don't have to do this, but it's kind of cool to do it. So real quick, the sine of 46 degrees equals the height over 10.1. And all I'm seeing, all I'm checking is to see, is the height exactly 8.6? Because if it is, I only got one answer. Now it's not, if you do the calculations, it comes out 7.3. So B is bigger than that, meaning I got two answers. This thing's gonna hit here and it's gonna hit here. So that 8.6 and it's gonna be that, 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 this is the hinge right here, okay? It's gonna hit it twice, so I got two different possibilities. So let's go through the process. You can see the answers here. So let's go through this, okay? So when I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the law of sines. So I'm gonna go sine of 46 degrees over 8.6. And that's gonna equal the sine of A over 10.1. If you do that, A comes out about 58 degrees, which I have underlined right here, about 58. There's also another angle that comes in there. The other angle is 180 minus 58, and that is about 122. 
Okay, so I've circled the two possible answers. Okay, and you see them both there. Okay, so I got two different triangles going here. Okay, so let's, I'm going to redraw them so you can see what's going on. Okay, so let me go ahead and get the eraser out. I'm going to erase, I'll leave the original drawing. And I'm going to uh, erase the rest of this here. So yeah, your your homework's this this is quite a bit of work on this to show. It's amazing how many calculations there are. Okay, so one of the triangles is obtuse. Okay, it's got 46 degrees here. It's got 10.1, and it's got this 122 degree angle. Okay, so that's probably good enough right there. So that is. 122 degrees. So it's pretty easy to calculate the last part. This is like, this is going to be 12 degrees using the 180 rule. And you got 10.1 and 8.6. And then you're going to have to use the law of sines to get that last side, which I will not do because you've done it so many times. And that last side is going to be very small, about 2.4, very small. The other triangle is an acute scalene, okay? Here's 46, 46 degrees. Here's 10.1. Here was uh, 8.6 on the other side. And then we figured out that this would be about 58 degrees, okay? And then that leaves that, <clears throat> that last angle for about, um, 76 degrees right here, 76 degrees, okay? And then you can use the law of sines to calculate that last one that comes out about 11.6, okay? Pretty cool. So a lot of work there. So there is your basics, and that's a complicated video for um, the law of sines, the ambiguous case. Thank you.